Hi, this is TGV. I am unavailable right now, but please leave a message after the beep. Thank you. Hello, it's Hugo. You must be still in London. Just calling to give you an idea for a quick video. So I was watching a splendid TV cooking show with that Rick Stein fellow. I couldn't help noticing he had one of those, uh, what do you call them, uh, papaya watches. No, that's not it. Um, Pineapple? No, not that either. Um, Apple, that's it. Can you imagine a watch named after a ruddy fruit? How frightfully ghastly. I simply can't understand. The watch didn't suit him at all. He'd look so much more dapper with a submariner. Anyway, moustache, tiddlywinks, the triceratops, and uh, bunny, the brontosaurus, are popping round for luncheon. Tulpip! Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, I'm gonna discuss five reasons why you should not buy an Apple Watch. In fact, you should get yourself one of these, a real traditional mechanical watch. And this is uh, the SKX I'm using as an example today because this is still around $200 and you get so much more. So I'm gonna explain why you should buy this and not this. Now, of course, before I get into it, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Benrus. This is a mil-spec American-made military watch uh, that was worn in Vietnam. This is uh, 1970, so it's just the end, towards the end of the Vietnam War. What is astounding about this watch is, when you consider how much I paid for it on the used market, it's around the same price as the retail of an average Apple Watch. However, what you get is a little slice of American history on the wrist. And I'm absolutely ensorcelled by this. It makes it a great conversation piece. Uh, It's also a a reminder to value my freedom uh, at a more uh, profound level. Again, this is is the perfect example of, of an alternative the same price as one of these. Mic drop, I think, is the expression. Anyway, let's get on with the five reasons. Number one, a fashion faux pas that can't be undone. Okay, reason number one why you should buy a real watch and not an Apple Watch is design. For me, I didn't connect with it, forgive the pun. I found it uninspired. I didn't get that um, connection I do with, with conventional watches. Something I really do appreciate about your more traditional watches is how their function or their intended purpose dictates the design. If we look at the dive watch, for example, you have so many tropes, the legibility, the dive timing bezel, these kind of things, the water resistance, and that all comes together in this beautiful execution of form and function. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of Apple, but in the Apple Watch, it just felt cold to me. I don't think it's a, it's a design that's going to be as long lasting as, for example, uh, the Cartier tank, which is over a hundred years old and still looks classy and cool as hell to this day. It really hasn't changed much. I don't think in a hundred years time, we're gonna, well, we'll look back and see, ah, yes, this is one of the most important early smartwatches. Uh, And of course, a lot of it is in the eye of the beholder, obviously, but it hasn't got that timeless elegance that everlasting design uh, that so many watches have got. No matter how much integration of watch design tropes like the uh, the wheel there, they try and incorporate. And we should be clear, there are different types of watch enthusiasts. You've got your movement geeks that really appreciate the engineering, the mechanical aspect. I'm more on the design aesthetic kind of uh, side of the spectrum. I really love the, the the way different companies have interpreted the design from an SKX, from Seiko or a Rolex Submariner, intended for the same purpose, obviously, but they're so distinctive, they have their own personalities. And the look and feel of a watch is so vitally important, that ineffable X factor. For example, when you strap on a Seamaster, it makes me feel a little bit like James Bond. I mean, there is that allure. With the Apple Watch, I didn't feel any of that romance or sense of adventure. And I know it's not because of the stripped down minimalism. For example, if we look at the Benrus here, uh, it is an uncomplicated, unabashed 
tool watch. Its uh, brushed case is there, so it has no reflective surfaces, because obviously we're looking at things at the most purest form of utilitarianism, and that is in a military context, the 24-hour dial, etc., the hacking uh, feature in the, um, the movement. So I can appreciate very strict minimalist embodiments of, of form and function. And with watches like the Benrus or the SKX, there is a sense of history there, the story of its evolution. You know, when I do my watch reviews, I always talk about history because it's such an important component to really understand a watch. Number two, notifications. No, thank you. When it comes to function, to me, it's completely superfluous. And it's ironic because a lot of people say that conventional watches are not needed and dated, but we'll get to that in just a moment. I love the independence a conventional watch has. There's no need to recharge it or make sure it's plugged in or any of that. With a manual wind, you have that beautiful uh, daily routine of, of, of topping it up, you know, uh, giving it a wind. And with an automatic, it's powered off your own movement. So essentially, you know, when you stop, the watch stops. Uh, either way. That relationship, although very simple, I appreciate it. It's also not dependent on software updates. It's not going to become uh, obsolete within a year because there are new versions, etc. If we look at the 50 watches that changed the world book, if we read a little bit about its design, Apple has an impressive track record in designing products that fulfill a need we did not even know existed. The iPod, the iPhone, and the iPad were all products with virtually no design precedent. Yet, they have all changed the way many of us communicate and consume digital content. Obviously, it's very difficult to get by without a phone these days, a cell phone. Um, I myself really did not like the way that you got notifications. I often put my phone on silent when I'm working or recording or something like that. I don't want the added stress. I don't need something <laughs> to work in conjunction with my phone whatsoever. The health uh, apps are probably something that is beneficial and does help a lot of people. Undoubtedly, I can certainly see the benefits, but for me, it just added an extra layer of, of stress. And, and, you know, especially when we're over bombarded with uh, this, this interactive world. It's, sometimes it's nice just to depend on something old school and providing you service it and look after it of course it has a longevity to it that that the, the apple watch certainly doesn't have i've often described the relationship between uh, a person and their watch as a kind of biomechanical codependency and if we over romanticize it the little balance beating away in there much like a human heart there's a magic there that you just don't get with uh, this and it's funny because I'm, I'm sure some of you are gonna say wow what about your G-Shocks you love G-Shocks yes of course but still I, I, I feel a sense of companionship they're also extremely durable I just don't get that same relationship with the iWatch Apple Watch sorry <laughs> get it right number three a real lack of artistry Reason number three not to buy them is value retention. Now, I've said a million times on this channel, I do not buy watches uh, for investment. The only investment I seek is in enjoyment. You know, I buy watches to enjoy them, to have fun. To me, this is a disposable technology. And it's funny because a lot of people, you know, the, 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 the younger generations, they look at watches as dated, by far not true. There's a big misconception about that. In fact, actually, if we look at some of the engineering, the micro-engineering, if you've ever been to a watch factory, you'll see it, especially more towards the high end. But as the technology trickles down and becomes more affordable and attainable, uh, you know, you see the implementation of micro-engineering even in affordable watches. And that is high tech. And it's constantly um, evolving and getting better. These days, um, you can get some amazing movements for not that much. I mean, look what the Chinese are doing with affordable tourbillons, etc. But beyond that, the use of materials is always being pushed forward. So the idea that watches are some kind of obsolete technology is absolutely wrong. But when it comes to value, I think these are, you're wasting your money because if you compare to the SKX, now, yes, okay, this is a discontinued 
uh, watch, it can last you a lifetime. These are notorious for going, especially this caliber or this family of movement, for decades without a service. Watches are also collectible. An extremely high amount of value can be placed in them. Uh, compared to other things. I mean, you can buy for investment. I've proved time and time again on this particular channel that no matter what level watches, some are actually extremely collectible and desired. I mean, there are there are $100 swatches that are now quadrupled in price because of their rarity or because they were collaboration with an artist or a musician or something along those lines. If you know what you're doing, you can actually uh, make money with watches. There's also the sentimental added value with watches. When you have a watch for 20 years and you pass it down to the next generation or you just simply look at it and you see a little scratch or you remember a holiday or an adventure or an, a, an event or you buy the watch to commemorate some kind of achievement, this is gonna be with you for most of your life, if not the entirety of your life. I don't see the sentimental a memory attachment potential with an Apple Watch. And talking of value, it really pains me to think of the amazing watches you can buy for the same price as an Apple Watch. Now you really can't put a price on enjoyment. If you've bought an Apple Watch and you've absolutely loved every moment of it, then, then that's, that's absolutely fine. Now the SKX, of course, is rather dated uh, by today's standards, but you can upgrade it, you can mod it, you can do all kinds of things to it. Number four, the design is a frightful bore. Okay, reason number four is style. You can change out the straps, of course, if you wanna give it a little bit more pizzazz, but it does not compare to the way you can express yourself uh, and match your sartorial choices as a conventional watch. Because conventional watches, obviously we have different styles, different genres, from pilot watches to divers, to dress watches, to field watches. One thing I really enjoy about watches is being able to choose a different uh, style of watch or, or type of watch, depending on my mood or how I feel. A lot of the time I pick my outfit around the watch. Okay, I know, I take it a little bit too extreme. Maybe you do that. Maybe I need to um, get out a little bit more. <laughs> I think about these things. If I'm wearing brown shoes and a brown belt or particular colors, I'll match the strap, etc. There's a, a, a different level or a, or a higher level of refinement that elevates its enjoyment to a whole new level. It's actually one of the highlights of my day and, and why I love collecting watches is because you know, sometimes you get bored of wearing the same watch all the time and you, you, you change out to something dramatically different. And then there's the style of clothing for the situation, dressing appropriately. If you wanna be suited and booted for formal attire, there's nothing like strapping on a dress watch. Or if you're being super casual in a kind of beta watch uh, scenario, washing the car, doing gardening, whatever, you know, strapping on a G-Shock. I don't think the Apple Watch can do it all. There are some do-it-all watches like the, uh, well, actually the SKX, the Submariner, the Seamaster, the Rolex Explorer, these kind of things. But not just luxury. Entry level two, uh, like we see with the SKX. I mean, this is a very, very versatile piece indeed. Divers often are. Number five, an Apple Watch simply can't dive. Okay, reason number five is the watch collecting hobby or being a watch enthusiast as a whole. Uh, this watch, the SKX, is your $200 passport to a whole new world of enjoyment. Uh, of learning, of meeting people. I mean, watches has changed my life. It's changed a lot of people's lives. Uh, it's also, more importantly, I think a refinement that is a little bit forgotten about these days. Uh, not just for men, but for women as well. I always believe that people should be as well-rounded as they can to know about watches. Not, you know, obviously not to the an extreme degree, but to have a little bit of that knowledge is important. You should be able to know what the difference between a quartz and the manual wind and um, the, the difference between a diver and a pilot watch. These, these fundamental things that we as watch enthusiasts obviously take for granted. It's a sad indictment of the times we live in that more people are not sharing and enjoying this hobby as it is. I mean, my channel, for example, is tiny in the whole scheme of things, but it shouldn't be like this. Watches should be more popular. Watches are part of the story of horology. 
a story that has run parallel to human civilization. Watches are just as important and integral tool today and in refinement as they were a hundred years ago. There's also the aspect of tradition. For example, I think of watches I inherited from my parents and grandparents, the sentimental attachment to those, the importance. And I have to say, I've met so many great people through uh, watches. I've made friends, lifelong friends, some of my best friends. And I do think it's important that any self-respecting gentleman or lady for that matter, should have a basic understanding of watches. <sighs> Welcome to Philadelphia. Okay. Please do share your thoughts and opinions, especially if you have any reasons you'd like to add your personal experiences with the Apple Watch. Please do share that in the comments below. Maybe you love the Apple Watch. What do you like about it? Um... So I just realized I kind of shot myself in the foot because <laughs> all the Apple Watch fans are gonna be watching this video. So to kind of counteract that, if you love these things more than Apple Watches, vote in the uh, likes and dislikes. If you like watches or love watches, hit that like button, please. If you dislike watches, please do share in the comments why and dislike this video. Um, a kind of rudimentary form of voting. Anyway, let's get back to the edit and finish this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.